Romans chapter number 5, Romans chapter 5, if you're in the Bible school, there'll be a little exam next Sunday on Romans 5, verses 1 through 11. Thought you might like to know. Romans chapter 5, and verse number 6, for when we were yet without strength, In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He made provision for sinners because sinners were not strong enough to make provision for themselves. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God made provision For the unrighteous, God made provision for those that were not good because we could never be sufficiently righteous or sufficiently good to make provision for ourselves. Much more than, if God has sent His Son Jesus Christ to suffer and bleed and die to pay for our sins, much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Let's pray together. Father, help me today to see the truth clearly, to speak the truth clearly, and help everyone that's come to receive the clear, blessed truth from your word, the Holy Bible. In Jesus' name we ask and we pray, and amen. If a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, anywhere, anywhere on the face of this earth, has put their faith and trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says they are saved. If any man, any woman, any boy, or any girl, anywhere on the face of this earth has not received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, the Bible says they are condemned already because they have not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God. Salvation is not a religion, it is not a denomination, it is not belonging to a certain group or faction, it's not following a certain man, it's not obeying a certain set of rules or regulations, it is faith and trust in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Savior. Different churches might proclaim Jesus as the Savior, but the church is not the Savior, Jesus is the Savior. Men and women might proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Those men or women, are <coughs> they are not the Savior. Jesus Christ is the Savior. If, if Buddha or Muhammad or the Pope or, or a Baptist preacher proclaimed that Jesus was the Savior, they would simply be proclaiming the truth. They would not be the truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the Savior. It's important we say that over and over and over again because if you go out this week and talk to 100 people and say, are you going to heaven when you die? I think so. Well, are you saved? They'll give you a blank look because they don't know what it means to be saved. And when you say, how are you going to get to heaven? They will insert the name of their church or their religious leader or some person or individual or or some set of works that they're performing. They're counting on to get them to heaven. Jesus saves. No one else saves, nothing else saves, Jesus saves. But if you are saved this morning, what you just read and what we will examine together is a statement from God. He put it in writing in his words so you could know it, stand upon it, rejoice in it. What God said in his word is that your salvation is a salvation for your past, a salvation for your present, and a salvation for your future. Is it any wonder that we joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ? 
We're not hoping so, we're not striving, we're not trying, we're not wishing, we're not fretting, we're not worrying. We're saved. Our past is taken care of, our present is taken care of, our future is taken care of. Take a look at our past. Verse number six, we're without strength. Verse number six, we're ungodly. Verse number seven, we're not righteous. Verse number seven, we're not good. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were, Yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is not to suggest that I do not sin today. We'll get to that. This is not to suggest that I will not sin tomorrow. We'll get to that. But the statement is that if you were nine years old or 99 years old, when you heard the gospel that Christ died for our sins, it is a fact that Jesus Christ died for every sin you had committed in those nine years or every sin you had committed in those 99 years. Christ died for our sins. Every one of us who is saved when we came to God for salvation had been guilty of different offenses. Some of you could stand today and say, I've never, I've never consumed alcoholic beverages. Others of you could stand and say, I've never consumed so many that I was intoxicated. Others of you could say, I was never so intoxicated that I forgot what day it was. Matters not. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Some of you could stand and say, I've never killed a man. Others could stand and say, I've never even thought about killing a man. Others could stand and say, I've never killed a man because I missed. <laughs> Everyone here is not a thief. Everyone here is not an adulterer. Everyone here is not, I started to say a liar. <laughs> Probably everyone here is told a lie. The fact is, Jesus Christ didn't go to the cross to die for a certain class of sins. He didn't go to the cross and die for sins that you think are really, really bad. When you talk to unsaved people and you say, you know the Bible says you're a sinner, they're offended. Because they have a definition of sin that is different from God's definition of sin. When you call them a sinner, what they hear is, you have done some really horrible, terrible things, and their answer is, I've never done anything that bad. The Bible says if we offend in one point, we're guilty of all. The Bible says that Jesus Christ did always those things that please his Father. He never broke one commandment one time. Now my point is, people sitting right here have probably done some things that people sitting right here have never done. And people sitting right here have probably done some things that people sitting right here have never done. But it doesn't matter. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when Jesus Christ went to the cross, this, this is so hard for people to, to wrap their minds around. When, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, he died for people like, this is the easy target, Adolf Hitler. And he died for people like your son and your daughter. And if you're saved, you understand that we're all in the same condemnation. If you're not saved, you say, how dare you put a boy, a girl, and Hitler in the same boat? I didn't put them there. God put all of humanity in one vessel and said all of sin had come short of the glory of God and they're all sailing for hell. But my son went to the cross as a commendation of my love. To prove my love, my son went to the cross and died for all sins of all sinners for all time so that we could proclaim to every man, woman, boy, and girl on the face of this earth, Jesus saves. You have a Savior. God loved you enough to provide salvation for you. Praise the Lord. I can say this morning that the day I came to Jesus Christ to be saved, and called upon the Lord for salvation. I was saved because God didn't say, I would have saved you had you not done that. 
I would have saved you had you not done that as many times as you did it. I would have saved you, but I've just run out of spots up here. I am so glad that every person on the face of the earth who reads this verse will have the Holy Spirit of God speak truthfully to them and say, God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you're saved, there are things you did you wish you hadn't done. If you are saved, there are things you wish you could undo. Jesus Christ paid for that. If you're saved, you know there's things you should have done better. There's things you should have done more correctly. There's areas you should have guarded your heart, your mind, your life more cautiously. You can't undo it. But Jesus paid for it all. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. My past is covered by the salvation of God. Now, look at verse number 10. The Bible says, For if when we were enemies, We were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now this is interesting. By his death, I was saved. By his life, I am saved. You see, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, And he suffered and he bled and died to pay for all my sins. And then on that day, I don't know what your day was. Mine was the 17th of December in 1976. And I I simply cried out from a sincere and believing heart, Lord, save me. And he did. He forgave all my sins. I thought it would be smooth sailing from there on out. It wasn't long that... I did some things that I shouldn't have done. Wasn't long I found out I was supposed to be doing some things that I wasn't doing. And and, and in my sincere ignorance, in my genuine desire to make it to heaven and not go to hell, I repeatedly got on my knees. And called out to the Lord and said, please, if I didn't get saved, please save me. If I didn't pray right, this time I hope I pray right. If I I didn't mean it strongly enough, I mean it stronger this time. Please save me. What I didn't realize is that Jesus Christ without my asking and Jesus Christ without my understanding was saving me by his life every single day. Let me show you. Keep your, your, your place right here. Look in 1 John chapter number 2. 1 John chapter 2. God is here writing not to aliens, strangers, lost people. He's writing to his children. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not, period. That's what God said. Don't sin. Don't sin. He doesn't want me to sin. He doesn't like it when I sin. It hurts me when I sin. It hurts others when I sin. It hurts the heart of God when I sin. That ye sin not, and (laughs) if any man sin. Do Do you see how well the Lord knew me before I was born? You see how well the Lord knew you before you were born? He didn't say, but if any man sin. That would have implied that somebody might not sin after they become a child of God. He said, don't sin, and when you do. Don't sin. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Now here's what happens. When I come to God for salvation, when you came to God for salvation, He could save you because all your sins were paid for. You believe that? And He did. He saved you because all your sins were paid for. Now, after I'm saved, I find out 
I'm a lot worse of a sinner than I thought I was. Let's be honest about it. You're out there in the world, and you're out there living your life, and somebody gives you the gospel, and, and you say, well, I don't think I'm a sinner. He said, well, they say, have you ever told a lie? Well, yeah, I've told a lie. Okay, a lie is a sin. Now, are you a sinner? Well, I guess so. Okay, if you're a sinner, you need to be saved. You believe that? Well, yeah, I believe that. And so you call on the Lord, and he saves you. And they give you a Bible. You need to start reading the Bible. And you start reading that Bible, and you find out, I've done a whole lot more than lie. I didn't know there were so many commandments. I didn't know there were so many things expected of me. And then you go to church, and the preacher starts preaching the Bible, and he shows you things you didn't see when you read the Bible. I'm telling you, about a year after I got saved, I wanted to get saved again because I didn't know how much I needed to be saved a year before. I've been in, I've been in this thing over 40 years. I'm telling you, I have a better understanding today of how surely I deserve to be in hell than I did 40 years ago. And of how, much, how, how guilty I was before God than I was 40 years ago. But now that I'm a child of God, when I sin, I have a defense attorney on retainer Round the clock, full time, for free, who reminds my accuser the devil, who reminds God my father, that sin he just committed, I am the propitiation for that sin. I already died for that one. I already paid for that one. You already accepted my payment for that sin. I am saved in the present not because I've become good enough. I'm still without strength. I'm still unrighteous. I'm still, sadly, in many ways, ungodly. Are you like God? I'm not like God. But I have an advocate. The Lord, I, I don't know how we, we could disagree on how Completely, he controls every action and, and orders every circumstance. I just know that 25 years ago, God looked at this preacher and this church and said, they're going to need a lawyer. <laughs> and sent Brother Jake our way. And every time, and there have been many, Jake's first words to me are always, don't say anything. Because <laughs> that's usually how we got into this, is you saying something. Don't say anything. And he pulls out that card, and it says, Richard Jackson, attorney. That's the only word most people in this world understand, attorney. When you see that, oh, well, I, I didn't know. <laughs> Guess we'll have to go by the law <laughs> instead of... <laughs> You know something? I have an attorney in heaven who's never lost a case, who never will lose a case. The facts are on his side. The evidence is on his side. Every time I commit a sin were his father desirous of throwing me out of his family and throwing me into hell to punish me for that sin, his son holds up a hand that's still wounded. He says, Father, you agreed, you agreed that if I suffered this, you would let me give eternal life to whoever trusted me. That was our agreement. Do you know why I'm saved? I'm saved because my Savior is alive. And he is alive to maintain my cause in the courtroom of heaven. I'm not saved because I'm living it. I'm not saved because I'm holding on to it. I'm not saved because I'm better than the next guy. I'm, I'm just as without strength and unrighteous as I was. If I had to earn salvation today, I couldn't earn it today any more than I could earn it 40 years ago. I'm saved by his life. Look at Galatians chapter 2. 
Galatians chapter number 2. Jesus is my Savior. I didn't know, that's a one-time thing, but it's an everyday thing. Let me put it to you this way before we read this verse. If you got saved uh, six months ago, if you got saved six years ago, if you got saved uh, 36 years ago to stay with the number, six months, six years, 36 years, if your answer is yes, don't raise your hand because I don't want everybody laughing at you. Do you know everything there is to know about the Bible? Do you know, do you understand everything there is to understand about the Bible? Okay, so let's, let's say that I, I got up here this morning and I said, if you're not saved, you need to come to God, and if you want to get saved, you confess all your sins to God and He'll forgive you. What if you confessed all your sins that you know about? What if you confess all your sins that you're convicted of and God saves you? And then you start reading in the Bible and you find out you didn't confess all your sins because you didn't know that was a sin. And you didn't confess all your sins that you were convicted of because a couple of them you knew were sin, but you thought they were kind of okay and you and God would work it out. Are you saved this morning? Is there a chance you're going to find out before the end of this year there's something you should be doing that you're not doing that you don't know today that you should be doing? Is it possible the Holy Spirit's going to uncover some attitude in your heart that you're quite comfortable with today, but as you grow in the Lord, you're not going to be comfortable with anymore? Look, here's my point. You can't be good enough to stay saved because you don't even know what good enough is. You can't live it because you don't even yet know what all the rules and expectations are. Jesus Christ is defending me when I commit sins that I don't even know I'm committing. I can't confess them. I can't repent of them. I don't even know I'm doing them. We look at these little boys and girls. They're three and four and five years old and they're shoving each other and pushing each other and, and crying because they didn't get two cookies and the other one got a cookie and I wanted the cookie. And Are you going to give them a lecture about Philippians 2, esteeming other better than yourself? <laughs> they don't even get it. Say, now honey, that's, that's covetousness. It's like, it's as idolatry. <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> They're little children. They're, they're, they're sinning in ways they don't comprehend. They're sinning in ways they can't comprehend. And you hope through a lifetime of training they'll come to know what sin is and try to stop doing it. Are we God's little children? If, if you could see your life, if I could see my life like God sees it, we wouldn't be these great Bible-believing servants of God outstanding for Christ in a dark world. We'd be a bunch of five-year-olds. <laughs> Lord's like, do you not understand? And he quotes the verse. And do you not understand? And we hear a sermon. And we, we walk out the door and say, Pastor, that was a great sermon. And then act like we never heard it. Right? I mean, we, we heard a sermon last Sunday morning, a, a life-changing sermon on loving others more than we love ourselves. How'd you do this week? <laughs> Wasn't so life-changing, was it? <laughs> it's more like it went right here, rattled around a little bit, and came out right over here. Because there's no place for it to lodge. <laughs> it just, it's just it's wandering around looking for a stopping place and just... Keep soft moving. I'm more convinced today than I was the day I got saved that I need a Savior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm more convinced today than I was the day I got saved that I deserve hell, not heaven. But I'm saved because the one who died to save me lives to save me. 
praise the Lord. Look at Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. I am crucified with Christ. That's the past. Nevertheless, I live, there's the present, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It's not, it's not my faith today that's holding this thing together. He is keeping faith. He gave his word. He promised me everlasting life. And because he doesn't lie, I'm saved today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Past salvation. Present salvation. Back to Romans 5. Verse number 9. <laughs> Much more than. Being now justified by his blood... We shall be saved from wrath through him. That's future. Let, let's, let's go way into the future and we'll work our way back. The Bible says when God creates a new heaven and a new earth, in that new heaven and new earth will dwell righteousness and only righteousness. Outside the bounds of that righteous new heaven and new earth that God will establish, we be a place of outer darkness called the lake of fire. It is the eternal abode of all those who refused the saving grace of God. It is the ultimate and final display of His wrath. I can read about it, I can teach about it, I can talk about it. I never fear it. I never fear it. I've been saved from the wrath to come. Let's back up. Before that white throne judgment where men get their day in court and they actually, the Bible shows us, they will actually argue with God and say, I'm right and you're wrong. I deserve eternal life and you've got no business judging me like you did. They, they, they'll do that. People die every hour of every day who refused God's salvation and the Bible says they open their eyes in hell being in torments. It's such a terrible place preachers don't want to talk about anymore. It's a terrible place Christians don't want to mention it to their unsaved friends anymore. We're, we're more concerned with people not being offended than we are people being rescued from hell. They'll be mighty offended when they wake up in hell. <laughs> That's a terrible place. Conscious torment, fire, all the rest. Everything you've read about in the Bible that, that people say, well, that couldn't really be true. But it is really true. It's a horrible place. I can read about it, I can teach it, I can, I can even dwell upon it so I can be more motivated to tell lost people about Jesus. I never, 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 never fear hell right. because I've been saved from the wrath to come. Amen. Let's back up a little farther. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Trouble happens like the sparks fly upward. Everybody that lives, Romans 3 says, has a little tribulation now and then. There is no reference in the New Testament epistles to God pouring out His wrath on anybody that's saved. There's no mention in the New Testament epistles of God pouring out His wrath on the world or anybody in this world as long as they're alive and breathing and the church is here on the earth. One of these days... There's going to be a time of seven years. It's called the Great Tribulation. And during that time, the Bible says God will pour out His wrath on the inhabitants of the earth. Well, if that's true, and it is, if that's what the Bible says, and it does, then I am certain I will make my departure before that time period begins. Because the one who saved me from the lake of fire and the one who saved me from hell has saved me from the wrath to come. 
And if that time is a time of wrath, then it will not be part of my experience. Hallelujah. I'm saved. I'm not saved from what I used to do. Though I, well, I'm not just saved from what I used to do. As wonderful as that is. I'm saved from what I'm doing right now. Praise the Lord. And I'm saved from what would have happened to me because I did it. Hallelujah. When we say Jesus saves, we're saying a whole lot more than he'll get you out of that little jam you're in right now. We mean a whole lot more than he'll answer a prayer and write, you, and write you new, a new name down in the book of life. What we mean is for the rest of eternity you're safe. Forever and forever and forever, Jesus Christ will secure to you the promise he made to you because of the death he died for you. Praise his holy name. Jesus saves. Isn't that amazing? Now, back to our text. Look at verse 11. I, I'll tell you what, verse, verse 6, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, verse 11, and not only so, as if that weren't enough. Verse 8, God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, verse 11, and not only so. Verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, verse 11, and not only so. Verse 10, for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. And not only so. God said, I, I died for your sins, I saved you from your past, I'm saving you in the present, I'll save you in the future, and if that's not enough for you, how could that not be enough? But if that's not enough for you, if you order in the next 30 minutes, <laughs> it's like God says, and wait, there's more. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Here's your challenge. Here's my challenge. I was saved from my past. Are you going to enjoy that? Or are you going to dwell on your past? Well, you know, my dad. Well, you know, my mom. Well, you know, when I was growing up. Well, you know, I, I, I married this woman once. Well, you know, this man I knew one time. Well, I knew this preacher once. Well, okay. But Jesus died to save you from all that. Are you going to enjoy being saved? Are you going to go back there and camp out like you weren't saved from it? Yeah. Right, amen. Right. Preach that. Yeah. Sure. You're saved. I wish you'd never been injured. I wish you'd never been hurt. I wish you'd never been harmed. I wish you'd never been disappointed. I wish you'd never sinned. I wish you'd never done the things you're ashamed of. You want to joy in God right now, or you want to go back there and wallow in that stuff? Amen. Amen. Right now, right now, every one of us could stand up and say, just give me a minute, give me a minute. Okay, here's what's wrong. Give me a minute, give me a minute. Okay, here, here's, here's what didn't go in my way. Hang, hang on just a second. Here's some people that aren't treating me the way I want to be treated. We could do that. Or right now we could choose to joy in God who saved us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. We could do that. Or you could look and say, oh man, you know what's coming? I'll tell you, I read the news, you ought to see what's coming. Well, I tell you, if they don't get Trump out of there, well, I tell you, if they get Trump out of there, well, I tell you, if they don't solve this problem, I tell you, if they don't solve that problem, and you know, you know what's coming. Well, actually, I don't. And you don't. And nobody does except what's written in the Bible. I was reading a book last night about how the whole, this whole thing's about over. 
because of the Soviet Union. Bunch of kids in here, what's that? Is that a soccer team? <laughs> Boy, if we don't win the space race, <laughs> what's that? Is that a NASCAR thing? <laughs> You can sit here this morning and say, praise God I'm saved, and praise God things are going great right now, but boy, you just don't, uh, I mean, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? I know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not going through the tribulation. I'm not going to hell. I'm not going to lake of fire. How about we just enjoy that? Just enjoy that. And when tomorrow gets here, it'll be today, and we've already learned how to enjoy today. Are you saved? Why don't you choose to enjoy it? Are you saved from your past? Enjoy that. I'm telling you right now, there are, I, can name, I can name three things, and I won't, because, but they, as, while I'm saying this, they come to my mind. Three, I, I mean, I've done a lot of things I wish I hadn't done, but there's three, they're, they're like Mount Rushmore minus one. If I had one more, I could make a Mount Rushmore of things I wish I hadn't done. And I've asked God so many times not to forgive them, they're forgiven, but to take their memory out of my mind. I don't want to keep remembering that I did that. Well, He will. The day I die. But until then, I am not going to go pitch my tent and camp around the memory of terrible things I wish I hadn't done, I'm going to joy in God who saved me and forgave me from even that. Amen. And I look out today and I see, I see a room full of people. It's amazing that you could take the stands we take and the positions we take and set forth the expectations we set forth and have this many people here. It is. It's an absolute miracle. But then I, I remember who used to sit there and who used to sit there and who grew up sitting there and the family used to be here. And you know what? I could just ruin my whole day. Or I can say, you know what? Jesus saves. I'm saved. I've got eternal life. i got the Holy Spirit sealing me. He's going to buy. I'm saved. You understand? There's something today for you to be unhappy about. And there's something today for you to have joy about. Pick one. Pick one. World's not going to change till Jesus comes back. Yours can. And that future, all oh, that future. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. It was category five. It's coming right here. Not only can we not have church Sunday, we might die. Yeah. Except we didn't. But there'll be something else. I'm going to die and be with Jesus. I'm going to shed some tears between now and then and be with Jesus. I'm going to have some heartaches between now and then and be with Jesus. You know what the Lord said? I saved you in the past, saving you in the present. I'll save you from the future. Now enjoy it. Enjoy it. Don't state it as a fact and then live like it's not. Don't say it's the most important thing that ever happened to you and then live like it's the least important thing that ever happened to you. Choose to have joy in Jesus Christ. Choose to rejoice in your salvation. Think I will. Hope you will. It's great to be saved. It's even greater to enjoy it. Don't let it just be a, a fact, like when was your birthday? <laughs> I saw these precious boys out there in, in uh, Montana. They're, tw they're, they're the most identical twins I've ever seen in my life. One of them used to have a freckle. I could tell them part because the one had the freckle. Now they both got a bunch of freckles. It's I mean, I'm telling you, I, I don't know which one's which. 
But I asked them, I said, hey guys, happy birthday. And they said, it's not our birthday. I said, when's your birthday? They gave two different dates. <laughs> Seven days apart. I said, your poor mom. <laughs> That'd be bad to have twins seven days apart, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, man. They couldn't even get the facts straight about when they were born. Some of you, uh, you know, some Baptist preacher tried to get you retreaded because you're not exactly sure the date on which you were born again. Doesn't matter what direction you were kneeling. It doesn't matter if you spit your gum out or didn't spit your gum out. Are you saved? If you're saved, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Don't make it a, well, yeah, let me check. Yeah, yeah I'm saved. Yeah, I wrote it down. Uh, yeah, I got saved. Uh, I got saved in uh, June 2019. <laughs> Well, what are you so unhappy about? Well, I, you know, I, my back hurts right now, and I, you know, I got an earache, and the guy cut me off in the traffic. <laughs> yeah, but are you saved? Yeah, I told you, it's right. Yeah, I wrote it down right here. It's a... I don't want to just have a factual record of some event that took place in my life. I want to have the joy of the Lord. Every day knowing that I'm saved. Amen. 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 Let's do that. Let's do that. Father, thank you for salvation so rich, so full, so free, so eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, please, if there's someone here who doesn't know you as their Savior, please, please draw them, open their eyes, show them the glorious truth of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, for your people, I know we all, we all have troubles and problems and things that rise up in our life and try to draw our attention away. But God, please teach us how to enjoy this great gift of life that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you're hard here at the last minute, that would be a blessing. So anyway, we'll have some fellowship time after uh, service this evening and uh, look forward to seeing you then. Thank you for coming. You are dismissed.